Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor. Magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. My concern today is not on any scientific or mishap uh, within, the, within the skeptical community, but, uh, between, but with something that has done, been done by Hollywood. And um, now that I'm actually in a position to finally state something on it, and hopefully to stop it, uh, to get it properly placed in video stores uh, when it releases on DVD April 29th, um, I'm here to speak out against the Golden Compass. I'm not speaking out for religious reasons. I am speaking out because of the fact that it corrupted the original novel. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, the Golden Compass is a novelization of a movie called uh, of a as a movie uh, as a dramatization in the movie of a uh, book called Northern Lights. Northern Lights, um, which was uh, released in the U.S. and Canada as the Golden Compass because of the film, um, is the book about a heroine called Lyra Bikela, uh, Bal Balaka. She's a small girl uh, growing up, uh, brought up in the cloistered world of Jordan College, Oxford, and her daemon. Um, uh, is a strange elementary particle um, believed by the magisterium uh, uh, to provide to provide evidence for original sin. Um, uh, sorry, she learns of the existence of dust. Um, dust appears uh, to attract less innocent the uh, attract uh, less attracted to the innocence of children and gives rise to grisly experiments being kid uh, carried out on kidnapped children on the icy wastelands uh, of the distant north by magisterium controlled scientists. Lyra and pa um, and Patalamon, her uh, her daemon. Um, uh, journey to the save their best uh, friend Roger Parslow and other kidnapped children from this peril with the aid of uh, Panzerbjorn, the, uh, the armored bear, Lorik um, By uh, Byronson, John Fa, uh, and, Fa and Farder Coram, uh, leaders of the Egyptians, the aeronaut um, L uh, Lee Scorbzi, and the witch Serafina uh, Pakela. During the trip, um, uh, during the trip, uh, Lyra discovers the identity of her parents. Um, uh, basically, uh, um, she ends up. Uh, um, she loses trust for for any. Ha uh, she loses any trust she had for Miss Coulter, and um, uh, but anyway, basically, she's she, yeah, she's she's stationed at Oxford, and um, anyway, in the original novel, um, the our, our hero our heroine Lyra uh, discovers that the Magisterium uh, is in fact the Catholic Church, and what has been happening is the fact that the original sin has been now that the fact they've pr supposedly profound found evidence for original sin. The fact that they can't attract kids anymore or people to their faith, they start resorting to various different means of, you know, of grisly experiments, torture, what have you, to attempt to get people back over to their faith. Um, you know, and the, you know, this is a direct speak out against the Catholic Church and some of the historic practices that it's had. Um, torturing people who were, you know, uh, lack of conversion, who were lack of convertants, um, you know, uh, children who seemed to not be interested in the faith, they've been willing to, you know, resort to manipulation and other things. Uh, the fact of Catholic priests with the whole young boys incident, I mean, you know, I'm not against the Catholic Church, but my concern is this. You know, they don't even, they don't even talk, uh, here, let me draw some more out of the uh, plot somewhere here. I actually read the novel, I actually took the t the liberty of reading and, uh, and reading the novel and seeing parts of the film, but, um, let me give you a, uh, a little bit of a better idea. Uh, when the gobblers are subject to recent urban engine, kidnapped her friend Roger, she goes. Um, she's given uh, she's given something called the uh, the uh, alith uh, alithiometer, which is actually a um, a co uh, which is actually a machine which will reveal the truth uh, in any particular situation. This could be seen as a metaphor for science. I mean, the the general oblation board is gobblers who've been kidnapping children. Um, Lyra uh, joins the expedition north, and on the journey, the, uh, the kidnapped children by the gobblers are having uh, demons cut away from them by experiment. Um, you know, this is having their reason cut away. I mean, like you know, um, you know, like this was you know this was a, a really good book. And now let's take a look at the Golden Compass. Um, the Golden Compass. The plot line is as follows. Um, let me get down here. Uh, in a parallel universe in which a person's soul resides outside their body in the form of an animal called a daemon, Europe is controlled by an authoritarian organization called the Magisterium. Um, so they're not, and I mean, there's no, and there, and even in the Wikipedia article talking about it, there is no, I mean, there was literally no mention of a ri of dust being the example for original sin or anything like that. Like in this particular P, in in, Go in in Philip Pullman's original work, this was a specifically an attack, uh, you know, a direct commentary on his particular opinion of the Catholic Church, you know, and it's uh, you know it's corrupt past and everything else, and you know, and basically saying religion is poison. You know, he's a secular humanist. That's it's a secular humanist message in here, 
And what really pisses me off is not the fact that, you know, uh, is because of the fact that his uh, his film got corrupted, was just generally looked uh, towards, uh, you know, the, the, his, his book got corrupted in the film, just to generally speak out against all forms of totalitarian authority, and the less of the focus was put on religion in the Catholic Church. Now, why do you ask, is this a problem? Where people could say, well, oh, well, it was easy, you know, like they, they always corrupt films. If you take a look at the Chronicles of Narnia and read the original books, uh, you know, the recent films that came out, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and the new one, Prince Caspian, coming out, there was not, and I mean, there was little to no deviation in the plot line from either one. And if you're worried about, uh, about you know, well, oh, it's, well, it's not a metaphor, it's just, you know, it's a series of children's books. The, bo the books, the Chronicles of Narnia, were meant to be a children's book series uh, by C.S. Lewis to be a representation of the Bible. And in Book 7, The Last Battle, C.S. Lewis did show his low opinion of atheists. He pointed, out, uh, he, he pointed out the dwarves in the book as doubting Aslan's existence, and, you know, he had a whole thing about how atheists were just simply going to be caught in, their own, uh, you know, caught in their own delusion in the afterlife. Not sent to hell, just caught in their own delusion, uh, quote-unquote. Philip Pullman, in his books, is, you know, his books, the, um, you know, the, the, um, the, uh, the dark, his dark materials, Northern Lights and the other two, um, Northern Lights was made into the film The Golden Compass, were, um, you know, were the counterpart to, um, were the counterpart to C.S. Lewis's books. And the thing is, if they can do little to no deviation from the, uh, you know, from the original C.S. Lewis texts without, you know, without fear of, uh, of, of it being, you know, quoted as, as uh, religious propaganda by the atheist, by the atheistic contingent, then, um, you know, then there shouldn't be a uh, there shouldn't be a watering down of the film for fear of religious reprisal. And I mean, even heck, there was still religious reprisal after that because you know some of the more fundamentalist elements, fearing that you know people would see the film, the kids would see the film, and then want to go read the books. And you know what? The thing is that my concern is not so much with the you know with uh, you know well um, with not just the corruption. My concern is the fact that the corruption of the film, you know, it shifts the message of what uh, of what Philip Pullman was trying to convey in his books. And you know, if if they can. I mean, now to be to you know to be fair, you know there was probably different producers for each of the films. But here's the thing: if the Chronicles of Narnia can be posted as films without any fear of reprisal, then the, Philip Pullman's work, you know, regardless of you know of whether or not it being a popularization or whether or not it you know has critical thinking fallacies or logic in it, it should be given its fair, you know, hearing. You know, it should the the, the film should have you know have pointed out the Catholic Church as the enemy, like the book did, you know, in the form of the Magisterium. You know, the movie should have stayed true to the book, and it should have been allowed out as such in the public, you know, in the public mindset to allow for fair and honest debate between Christians and atheists in a popular fictionalized setting. You know, if, you know, it, it should be allowed a fair, you know, it should be allowed a fair, um, you know, a fair hearing. And in my book, you know, from having, from having taken a look at the two movies and how they stayed closely true to the books, I don't think that was done. And... You know, now, of course, uh, for those of you who might be considering, well, what is, what is this about, you know, about your concerns of logic and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, you know, and worried about, you know, the possibilities of, you know, of, dire of directly attacking the Catholic Church through portraying them to be monsters and like that, wouldn't that be ad hominem? Well, here, let me put it out this to you this way. Whether, Phil whether Philip Pullman's work slips into the, uh, into the ad hominems or the other stuff which I'm trying to watch for, and yes, I am watching his work like I am watching every other uh, prominent atheist out there, uh, like I am watching the prominent religious people, so which, at which point if I find something in there, I'm going to call him on it, and I actually have called him on one or two things already, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, I've already sent him an email on that, but here's the thing. In every case where I've seen another video or another something else, you know, uh, resort to a critical thinking fallacy, I've never tried to shut down the video. I've commented on the video and tried to ask the author to try to amend their arguments. That was my concern, and that's the way I work it. And the thing is that, you know, I do not believe, you know, I may not, I may not agree with someone's position. I may not even agree with the approach they deal with to the same position that I deal with, and I will call them on it. But simultaneously, that doesn't mean that I'm going to try to stop them uh, from having the right to say what they want to say. You know, all ideas should be put out there, at least, for honest debate. And, you know, I don't think that Hollywood has done that. And anyway, my main beef right now is the fact that Roger's video, Where I Live, has a top 10 category, and uh, The Golden Compass is going to come out on April 29th on DVD, and is going to be placed in the top 10. Now, the thing is, I don't agree with that. Given the fact that it corrupted a, uh, Philip Pullman's work, and the fact that the C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia, were able to stay true to the book, I think it should be released, you know, on DVD, but I don't think it should be placed in the top 10. It should be placed, like, in the top 11 or something like that, you know, as a, as a good film, but not based in the top 10, you know, for, you know, it should be put in its place to make people realize, you know, this is what it did to the books is not appropriate. You know, that's it. It's as simple as that. Just, you know, just rank it appropriately with that. People can still see it. You know, it's just, it's not, you know, I don't think it should be given a top 10 credence to, you know, bias it.
you know, I don't think it should be done in that favor. That's just my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Toodles.